Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Venus, your Black Woman Millionaire's mentor. We are home. Thank you, God. Okay, we're home. We've been, we were in Miami, magnificent Miami. And I'm very excited to be with you today. And I got a question for you. And it's a real one because I got to talk to you about some things and train you up a bit. Have you ever turned somebody else into the enemy or has someone done it to you? I probably should put that in there. Has someone turned you into the enemy? Okay. It's a fair question. I'm, I'm sitting, I've got my laptop on my, literally on my lap. So if it's rocking, it's because, ah, because it's on my lap. Okay. But it's a, it's a, hey, Crystal Cole. Okay. Let me give you everyone a second to get here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yay. Hi, everybody. Hey, glad you're here. Glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I guess I'll just keep cut to a couple of seconds. I'm excited. Hey, Joy, some repeat offenders. We love you. Okay, thank you for the hearts. Yay, hearts. Um, oh my God, Karen's here. Oh, Donna's here. Woohoo, Donna Major. Woohoo. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Joy. Hi, Joy. Thank you for the hearts. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you for the hearts. Um, hi, Donna. <laughs> Who oh, you sent me a brownie face? Hey, Nadra. Glad you're here, Mama. Glad you're here. Okay. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Angie. Okay. It's going to be a hey day. It's kind of hot. Okay. My voice is weird. Hey, Karen. Hey, Jay. Welcome, everyone. Glad you're here. Well, who is, throwing, who is giving me frowny faces? Someone is over there. I'm going to give a frowny face. Will you stop it? Hey, Jackie. So go ahead and start sharing this post, sharing this broadcast. I got to talk to y'all about some things today, ladies. This shit is profound. Let me tell you who I am because I forgot. So for those of you who are new to me, I'm Dr. Venus, your Black Woman Millionaire's Mentor. I am a, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to encourage you to um, subscribe. Click the button that says that you get notified each time I come on. Sometimes I come around six-ish. I'm not always at six o'clock. Sometimes like three minutes before or five minutes behind, but I am here. Oh yeah, three year, three weeks to LA. Yes, Joy is gonna be amazing. And so, um, let me tell you about me. For those of you who are new to me and those who've been rock rolling with me for a minute, just thank you for your patience. Okay. Hey, Melinda, how are you, my love? So, uh, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a pillow. Uh, I just got a pillow. Yes. Okay. Let me see that. I think that stabilizes a bit more. All right. I didn't want to go upstairs to my office because I wanted to be downstairs. Lisa's down here, so if Lisa's down here. It must be good. All right. So those, hey, Dr. B, woohoo, glad you're here. All right, the gang's all here. Let me get another, let me get another pillow because I don't like the way that one feels. Ugh. Ah. Okay. I can do it. I believe in me. I believe in me. I believe in me. I can do this. Okay, let's see how it goes. All right. That feels better. At least I'm not rocking and tipping. You know, no, no, we, Jay, we, we just, we're back in ball. Good Jesus Christ. I've been writing. Um, we're back in, <laughs> what state is this? Dallas. Tour brain. Tour brain. It's just what happens, y'all. It's just what happens. So, again, welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Venus, your Black Woman Millionaire's mentor. My life is a miracle on so many levels. But let me give you a sense of where I am, who I am so you can understand, like, why is she talking to me? And why should I listen to her? By the time, hi, Rosalind. Oh, my God. So by the time I was 16 years old, I was living on the streets of Baltimore. I missed a lot of negativity and um, just a lot of negativity. Um, and trying to figure out what to say that won't take me and take you places. Um, eating out of trash cans, sleeping in urine, beer, in urine and beer, um, a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's the best I got today, God. And it was my ninth grade math teacher, a black woman, holler and preach, who literally, literally saved my life. That is not symbolic. That is not a metaphor. Um, the best metaphor I can give you is if you can imagine a dog that has been um, starved and um, neglected and left in the cold and um, and rain and, and, and dirty and beaten. That's, that's, that's about, that's, that was the condition she found me in, right? Anyway, it's because of her love that I eventually graduated from Stanford University with a second master's and a PhD. I have four degrees. Um, we took all the survival that kept me alive on the streets and turned it into a system that fast tracked us to the million dollar mark in just under three years. Our company, Defy Impossible Inc., has 
grossed well over four million in the last five years. And um, what else? We have another we have another one bestseller. Thanks to you, Holla and Preach. Thank you, my tribe, for loving me and holding me and really just taking care of me. Um, and my TV show is being pitched. I'm exactly producing it, starring in it. That's happening literally right now. We're on a national tour. Good God. And we're coming to the last leg. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Mary. Um, where are we? We just finished Miami. That was tour stop number seven. So we're down to our last three. And you need to get in the room with me. Y'all don't even understand. Facebook cannot do what I can do when we're together and what we can do together as a community. So come play. Come be with us. Look, we're the hottest thing out there right now. I'm going to tell you. The word on the street is, if you're serious about your paper, you got to get in the room with me. So please go to theblackwomanmillionaire.com forward slash tour. Theblackwomanmillionaire.com forward slash tour. Okay? And um, grab your seat. We're going to be in <laughs> we're going to be in New York, L no New York, New Jersey in two weeks. Come on over. I know it's in New Jersey, New York. Come on over. Cross the bridge. We got it situated right across the bridge. Come on and play. And um, then we're going to be in LA, and then we're going to be going to wrap it up in Austin. Okay. So I'm excited about the way sisters are showing up, being your sister's keeper. Please share the word. You know, hi Robin from Jamaica. Um, the reason why we're making such waves is because of you. You know, you're the one who's talking about it. You're the one posting and sending the word out and spreading the love. And I thank you. I, I mind shit. I'm about to build an army of black women who empower other black women through their money. So it takes an army to, to do that. And I cannot do it without you. And I wouldn't want to. Okay. So please tag people and literally, you could literally right now think of someone who really needs to be fed in terms of her own personal power and her money. Tag her. Have her participate. Share this word. You can say, hey, check it out. This chick is deep. And that way, you know, give them some context, right? And so that we can all grow together. You know, it's no fun growing alone, all right? And you're going to need people who have your back when it's time to do your own marketing business thing. Okay, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I need to say. Um, Yes, I told you I'll see you soon. I, Zumba, I know you're coming. <laughs> Zumba, I'm right here, baby. I know. But Zumba, make sure other people know so they have the shot, okay? Thank you, Loretta, for um, sharing. I appreciate it. And please send me love. A heart's work. Yay, give me a heart. Wow, thumbs up. Yay, team. That works. That way I feel like I'm in a dialogue, not a monologue, because I'm talking to the screen. Uh, and um, you should know that I, I love my wife. She's the president of the Fine Possible. I'm the CEO. Her name is Lisa. And she really, truly is perfection. You don't even understand. She's like the best. I won the wife lottery. All right. Um, I love God. And let me see what else. I love you. And I curse like a sailor. For me, cursing is an art. Yes, team. Okay. Um, and, and we have a very inclusive community, right? We have every, everyone's here. I mean, literally, I got sisters from other misters, literally from all over the world. We have brothers from other mothers. We have the queer community, the trans community, the atheist community. Come on down. It's not a problem. Because here you're loved. You know what I'm saying? There's no condemnation. And if you find that you're not the kind of, the kind of human being who can love people where they are, then you should leave us. <laughs> you should just go for bye. <laughs> Thank you, Anita, for sharing. Love you for that. Okay, just leave. It's okay. Well, nobody's mad at you. It was all good. We love you enough to say, boo, this is not your house. You know, because you don't want us to come for you. My people will eat you. In a loving way, but they're remarkably protective. Michelle says, I don't have any money, but I have a dream and need an army. I live in California. I want to, I want to bring your team. I'm from, I love you, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle is pitching. Hey, hi, Lisa. Okay. All right. So, okay, so please tag and share. Michelle, I hear you. Okay. What I would recommend you do is send an email to support at the Fire Impossible. Okay. Um, and this see what's possible, okay? I don't know, because the team may already be full, okay? But go ahead and send an email, okay? So, all right, ladies, we're going to talk about some, mm, that to y'all curse, because I got some Christian friends whom I love and adore, and thank God they're progressive. They don't, they don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't, they don't penalize me for my sins. So, all right, 
Go, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's no problem. Look, every, well, I'm not, look, I'm not for everybody. I'm not for every black woman. I'm too street for them. I understand. It's okay. But I love you enough and respect you enough to let you know what you're getting into so you don't feel duped or surprised. I think if you love somebody, you tell them. You don't let them not know what you're about, and then they have to go through the emotional upset of like, eh, you didn't tell me. That's this close. Look, people need to know what I'm going to say. People get, need to be ready because I'm about to say some shit, and I'm trying to be nice. I'm, giving y'all, I'm trying to give you at least 10 minutes to get acclimated. You know what I'm saying? Um, welcome, Jackie. Welcome, Regina. Hi, Erica. I got Facebook friends. I got Facebook friends. Robert says, I'm on team Dr. B. I love you for that. Getting ready to put to put me in her show. I love you for that. Trish says, cussing as spice to the tongue. The words need seasoning sometimes. It, it may very well be, y'all, but y'all forget sometimes I was raised on the streets. I don't even think of it as cursing. To me, I really am bilingual. I can speak street. I can speak black girl magic. I can speak money. It doesn't occur to me as cursing, but I do know that I value you. I value each one of you. And I want to demonstrate for you that you can be yourself and make your money. You don't have to try to be somebody else. So there's a reason to it. And that's the reason why I want to make sure you're okay. It's because when I get free, then I'm going to say whatever there is to say, because that's what spirit put on me to say. And you should know I'm anointed. I've surrendered to that one too. I'm just a Christian who curses a lot, you know? So, you know, you'll get used to it or you'll leave. And that's fine. That just means I'm not your teacher. But for those who I am your teacher, you'll get something from me you can't get anywhere else. Okay? And that is the reason why people come be with me on tours, because I can give you something you cannot get from any other human being on the planet. And that's not hyperbole. It's not. I literally can hear what people will buy from you. And that is not regular. You have to get in the room. You have to get in my space. You have to be with other like-hearted sisters who can love on you and support you. And if you don't do that, what you're going to do is do what you've been taught, and that doesn't work. Okay? So I got an edge on me. Oops. All right. Okay. I think I think I got all of my disclaimers in. Okay? All right. Oh, well, everyone's here. Oh, my God. Everyone's here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, honey, yeah, it's not a problem, okay? If I see something that resonates with you, type in the word holla, H-O-L-L-A. If I see something that pierces, type in the word preach. I come from the tradition of the Black Baptist Church. Call and response is in my blood. It, it didn't leave me, all right? Okay? And if I see something that really is like, oh, my God, this chick is me. She is reading my mail. She all up in my business. Type in holler and preach. And let me know what I said, so I'll know what what, what landed. Okay. Hmm. And one more thing I want to say about curse me if I get into teaching real deep is this: I don't curse for for um. How do you say? This I'm gonna tell you this. Okay, so I can keep it. When I'm comfortable with you, when I'm committed and passionate. I fall back into the language that kept me alive, okay? And you should know that when I'm with people that I don't hold as my own, they don't get that. My best work is when I'm not censoring me. If I don't know you, then I measure my genius, okay? So it's a level of comfort. If I feel like I love you and you love me back in whatever version of that you have, I'm not going to I'm not going to withhold myself under the auspices of hurting you, you know, because that's not my thing. Okay, so so it's not a not not everyone's a cursor, you know. Not everybody has it's an art. <laughs> Bernie Mac, yes. So don't feel like you have to curse in order to be authentic. It's not necessarily the case. I literally just to me it literally is pep freak up a language. I don't have it like it's anything other than a comma, <laughs> a semicolon. Okay. All right, so I think I got all that in. All right, so I want to talk to you today. And I may take my glasses off. Um, We just got off a plane from Miami, and I'm trying to protect my eyes, and I'll take a nap later. Um, But I want to talk to you about being turned into the enemy. Y'all should make sure you share this post, share this broadcast now. I can't even tell you. There's some sister or a bunch of sisters and brothers who love us who are going to be released and um, freed up from this conversation, okay? 
because I'm about to say some shit and you need to walk it, all right? No, I love my tribe. No, my tribe, I can shit. Y'all carry me. Y'all don't want to make a bestseller. I ain't do nothing but pray a lot. So I need you to look in your own real life. And what I need you to identify is when have you done your very best? Love somebody with your whole heart. It, you know, went above and beyond what you would for somebody else. It could have been a client. It could have been a spouse. It could have been a peer. It could have been a vendor. Okay. It could have. And unbeknownst to you, something you did or did not do, say or did not say, left them twisted in some way, okay? Like, they got triggered. Survival kicked in. And it's, it should happen to me all the time, right? So it's not a judgment, okay? Thank you for the hearts. Um, can, do you know what I'm saying? That someone turned you into the enemy. They, like, all the good you did went out the, went out the window. None of the shit counted. They're like, no, you betrayed me. Oh, no, you broke my heart. No, you left me out there. No, you threw me away. And, and, and it's real for them. It's not, it's not, they're not lying. It's just real for them. It feels like you just, you just killed their puppy. You know what I'm saying? Tiny Tiny says guilty. I'm shit. Me too. Gerald, I see you preach. It's real. And it's not, it's not bad. It's not a negative. It's a human thing. Okay. But I want you to understand something. I need y'all, I need everyone to find a moment in their life where they have turned somebody else into the enemy. Because that person did not meet your unspoken expectations. Holler at me if you have done that. Oh, and preach. I see you, Shanika. They didn't meet your expectation. You know, you thought they should have come to your wedding. For example, Kanye West was pissed with Jay-Z and Beyonce because he they didn't come to his wedding to, to Kim. This was a big deal for him. This took he was he was livid about this. He's like. Why would you not come to my wedding? And in his world, there's no making it back. It hurt him. It hurt him. You know what I'm saying? Or now, and who knows? I don't know nothing about none of that. But I'm saying that that just not come to somebody's wedding. You don't even know how important you are to them, right? Or let's say you have a vendor. I mean, literally, just in, in terms of business, you have a vendor who is who, who's waiting on you to. Promote them, you know what I'm saying, to do a, a do an email for them, a blast or something for them, and you get busy. I mean, it happens. It's like, oh, my God, you get busy and you forget it or you don't do it. They're now like, oh, you think you better than me? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, what the hell happened? Never mind that you have built out a cathedral for that vendor, okay? Or it's a client who really believes that you should – be available. You should just be available. You see what I'm saying? Or you should be accessible at, at, at two in the morning. I'm just making that up. You see what I'm saying? But somehow or another, that, and the thing is, no harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. No judgment, no condemnation, shit. Join the human race. You know, I get pissed off with people when, it's, when, they, go, when they want to get coffee and I want fucking tea. You know what I'm saying? So don't trip off of it. But I need you to understand that you and I, as human beings, as black women of purpose and power who are out to heal our way to seven figures, okay, with ease on our own terms, in some capacity, I need you to look in your real life to see when you have turned somebody else into the enemy. Okay? No, that's real talk. I feel you, Kiva. I'm trying to think of a time. Hell, you, we do it in relationships all the time. We do it with our spouses. You see what I'm saying? They could have been the best spouse, and because they didn't kiss you when they walked through the door, now they all kinds of bitches. You know what I'm saying? It's just amazing, right? And so, a word of hearts, don't slap, don't slow them down now. Nope, we building now. I'm just building the case, right? And so, I was, um, and I need to say two things before I deep dive into this, okay? Hmm. And we and we go we deep dive into these types of um, distinctions on tour at the Black Woman Millionaires Tour. Okay, 
But here I'm sharing with you, there I teach how come. The monetary value of healing is priceless. It's probably one of my best pieces. Mm. So here's the first thing I need you to note. If someone turns you into the enemy, take the case they love you. Let's just get that one over it, okay? Take the case they either love you or respect you or hold you in high esteem. And um, or they have a value on you. So you have to remember the love, no matter what. So let me paste that. Remember the love. Remember the love, okay? Everybody remember the love because when they turn you into the enemy, what happens is everything you thought you had done right gets erased. It's no longer valid in their worldview, in their, in their pain. You see what I'm saying? And if you look in your own self, you can see it. You know, you, you villainize people, all right? Yes, you have to remember the love. Okay, so let's put that as a backdrop. But here's the thing you want to understand. This is very important specifically for you in terms of your business. Okay? I'm going to walk it slow so you can understand how this particular behavior in your business will kill off your money. It will murder your money. It will kill your cash. Let's just get that. This is how profoundly impactful turning someone into the enemy can be. Okay. I there was some there was a, something that went down on Facebook with a white woman. Okay. I don't know her. She's some spiritual business chick. Not, not my house. Y'all know how I do. I don't, I'm not that chick. I don't fuck with it too hard, right? And I got tagged in a post because somebody from my tribe was talking to somebody else in her tribe about saying, I want to be trained by black. I mean, who does anybody know a black woman in the internet marketing thought leader business arena, right? And someone in all love said, Ooh, 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 you should check out Dr. Venus. If you want to heal your way, you need to know her. And the response from the young lady was this, and this is the word she said, I've already abandoned her. I love the word abandoned, so hold on to that, okay? And she says, because when you come for my sisters, you come for me. I love the loyalty, okay? Love the loyalty. So when I say, when you remember the love, you can actually see some shit. If you just react, you ain't going to hear a damn thing, all right? That was beautiful. I, I love, you know, if you come after my, when you come, you know, I don't, I don't flow with anybody who comes after my sister, so that thing is hilarious, okay? So I want you to know. Now, I have no idea who this chick is. I have no idea what the incident was. Could not tell you. Don't even know. And it's not mine to know, but I want you to see it in a business. I want you all to feel me on this. When she put that response in that public forum, she fucked her reputation. She fucked herself six ways to Sunday. She just, I'm like, boo, do you understand what you just did? No, she doesn't. Because where she's looking, this is what I need y'all to receive. She's looking at her unfulfilled expectation. Do you understand? She's not looking at the context. She's not even looking at the impact. We already talked about that. And she's not even contending with my reach. Ugh. So everyone who reads that word from her will know her as a gossip, as a slanderer. It's crazy. I'm like, baby, do you know what you just did? Does that make any sense? And this is, I need y'all to know how this works because if you don't understand it, you will fuck your reputation, which will fuck your money for an opinion. For an opinion. Oh, I mean, Jesus Christ. And this is the thing you need to understand. People watch you. before they ever talk to you. They track you. Y'all have no idea how many people I track because I want to check up on you, whether you're my coach or not. How you, how you doing, Taj? I'm glad you're here. Un Unfulfilled expectation is when you have a standard in your own imagination. Let's say you have an expectation that people are on time. 
Okay, Erica. And let's say Oprah comes late. Well, because Oprah came late, you now turned her into the enemy. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, oh, she thinks she's better than us. Now she's going to make us wait on her. You see what I'm saying? Never mind that there was traffic out the wazoo. Never mind that she just raised 1.3 million for your charity. It doesn't matter. Whatever your trigger is around your unfulfilled, unspoken expectation, you turn the person into the enemy. Look in your life. You'll see it yourself. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be realistic. It doesn't have to be you. Okay, good. Erica got it. You see what I'm saying? And it doesn't, it's like, for example, the young lady who made that statement of abandoning me, which I thought, again, was beautiful wording. She abandoned me. Hmm. Okay. How can you abandon somebody who doesn't know you? That's the first piece. The second piece is this. Abandon is a very interesting term because it points to some kind of letdown and betrayal. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's a hope. It's a beautiful word, actually, if you think about it. But the thing I want y'all to understand, good evening, Dr. Crystal. Glad you're here, my lady. Glad you're here. So the thing is, you, if you do that, if you turn people into the enemy publicly, you get branded. And no one's going to tell you that. They just won't open your emails. They just won't invite you to their stages. They just won't invite you to their rooms. You see what I'm saying? They won't do it. Why would they? Because if you do it to me, you do it to them. It's very clear. It's, it's this how people, it's the people, your actions tell people what you're going to do. So if you do it, if you cheat on him, you're going to cheat on me. You see what I'm saying? So and so, and the thing is, this is the thing. If the young lady was hurt or I said something that's, that's offensive, which is very, very likely, she could always, always have sent me a private email. She could have tagged me on Facebook. She could have sent a message. She didn't. She did it publicly, which is called a public shaming. Do you see what I'm saying? So when you do things like that, it's sort of like when, John, it's sort of like when Kanye West posted, um, what's that brother's name? John, John, oh, John Legend. Which Legends? John Legends post, hey, brother, what you doing? That's a public shaming. That is designed to discredit a person and to put a person in their place. It's not personal. We do it. You see it all the time. You see um, President 45 doing it with people every day. The people, I mean, if you look at what the people did, the press did with, um, what's that chick? Um, White Horse Correspondent Dinner. What is the woman who did that? Oh, my God. What is it? Wolf, Michelle Wolf. They did the same thing to her. It's the positioning thing. And y'all going to be sick of me talking about positioning, but it's the key to, it's the key to life. And so, um, so the thing is you have to understand is if there's really a problem, then come talk to me or talk to the person you hurt by. Do you see what I'm saying? Give them a chance to clarify. Give them a chance. And if you don't do that, what you're going to do is damage your reputation by your example. Okay. So you have to look in your real life when you've done this. Okay. Now that's, that's a public betrayal. Like somehow or another she's left betrayed. So she did, you know, whatever. So I said something to her friend, her friend gossiped, probably didn't tell her the whole story in the same. It's almost like, you know, we talk about Kanye's, um, saying, say was a choice. Do y'all know we never saw the full clip? Well, I haven't, let me say that. I haven't seen the full clip from TMZ, but it didn't get promoted as a full clip. It got promoted as one piece. So it's out of context. So you, you know, you can make, and by the time you catch up with the context, you're playing backwater. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to backpedal. So that's a strategy, y'all. That's a strategy. Hmm. Hmm. Tiny says, they're just la, 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 when you tell you death, do you part. Tiny, maybe, I don't know. I know when people are hurt, they say shit. I know when I'm hurt, I say shit. And I can't see you because the pain is the pain is too strong. Okay, which is why I'm taking the time to train y'all up in terms of you can't the, your, the feelings are the least viable place to go in terms of your business model because they're fickle, right? And you do have un, oh, I saw the teardrop, and so and you do have unspoken expectations, and you may not even know them until they're crossed. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you another one that you need to look out for. How many of you have ever had black people? want to have a different payment standard for you than they do for white people. I'm waiting on it, God. They didn't hear that one. I'm going to drink some tea while you wait. I'm, I'm going to let you work that one out, okay? Mm. 
Nobody? Maybe the maybe the computer's taking this time. Okay. Have you ever <laughs> she had a hand up? Have you ever yes, okay, I'm just waiting on it. Okay, Tamara, then you understand what I'm talking about. Have you ever had somebody get pissed off with you because they didn't pay? Or they didn't get the discount? Or they didn't get the hookup? Have you ever had that happen? Anybody in business? Okay, I'm just checking. Okay, okay, great. Another form of turning a person to the enemy. When I first started out, I didn't know what I was doing at all, okay? Not even close. And when I started to hang out with white people, rich white people, internet rich, not regular rich, but internet rich, all right? And I started to go to their things and check up on it and, you know, be nosy. And I found out when I first heard, the first offer I ever heard that was for $25,000, first I stopped breathing because I'm like, what the fuck could be worth $25,000? That, that was just like beyond my mind. My mind broke, right? And it was, it was $25,000 for advice. That was, that was like, and then I want y'all to know I got pissed. I was insulted. I'm like, who does this chick think she is that she is going to charge $25,000 for her advice? This is the shit I was saying to myself, right? I was, I was, I was outraged. <laughs> I was outraged. Y'all, I mean, this was so bad. God forgive me for my sins. This was beyond so bad, right? It was terrible. And I turned her into the enemy. I started looking at her stuff like, mm-hmm, who does she think she is? I just, I, you know, I just, in my own imagining, she was this super duper white woman who had privilege. I made up all kinds of shit. I made up, I made up stuff that wasn't even there. All right, y'all. Yeah, and God forgive me, but it was it's funny today, but back the, at the time, shit, eight, seven, eight years ago, I was like, who the hell? And then I said, we well, must be stupid to pay somebody. I mean, I did I, I, mm, all kinds of wrong, just all kinds of wrong. I was wrong, right? And um, my mother, Nana, made me spend $1,000 to stop looking from outside and pay to get in to find out how all this internet marketing and shit work, right? And I begrudgingly did it because Nana's bigger than me and she's, she's the boss of me, so I do what she says. And once I got inside of the training, I realized it was like a cathedral with different rooms and different doors. I had no clue. And I realized my arrogance had me think that because she did it, I should be able to do it. And as I got to know her, I found out she was a single mom with two kids. She was paying for her husband to go to, to, to medical school. Her dad had died. I was like, what the fuck? You know, so I, I had made up all this stuff, right? Anyway, she ended up being one of my best, she she'd been my best mentor ever since, right? But that first, but my, but I turned her into the enemy. She had to make it with me, earn it with me. You see what I'm saying? I was very aggressive. I was, I was wrong on so many levels and she, she was gracious, right? My point is that you can turn someone into the enemy through gossip or even through bad in, your energetic, okay? And had I, not had, some, had I not had a mentor who loved me, I would have missed out on the best mentor for me. I would have missed it because my unspoken expectation of what someone should ask for, what they have a right to ask for, would have killed me. I would, I would still be a professor right now if my mom had not, if Nana had said, will you stop being cheap and just buy and pay and find out? What you gonna do? You've already blown 100,000. So she, she was right, and she was so right. So thank God for mentors, okay? And, this, and so that's the next one. So I want you to see if you're doing that or have you done that and what has it cost you, which is the better question. And the last one I wanna to talk to you about is one you do with, with clients, okay? Sometimes your clients, okay, let me say this. Black people, let me talk to you for a minute, okay? Black people have a different, and, and y'all let me know if you've had this experience and I'm willing for it to just be me. But have you ever noticed that black people have a different standard and expectation of how they think you should do business with them 
Like you should always give them a discount or you should, oh my God. Oh, just, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's really practical. Um, that you should create special array of some kind of special arrangement just for them, or they should um, not be held to the same standard as everybody else. Okay. I don't know how it's been in your business, but it's damn sure been that way in mine. Okay. For a while. For, I mean, since I've been in business, where my heart's at, I see a laughing face. Oh, y'all scared. Oh, where y'all at? Where are my tribe at? Where are my sisters at? Oh, y'all don't, don't back down now. Okay. She said, girl. <laughs> well, don't, it's not unfortunate as human, but there's an unspoken expectation that I'm going to ask you to start being responsible for. Is this. And this is, because I'm going to tell you like this. Check it out. A black person, on average, majority, there are always exceptions, a black person would never ask Mercedes, AT&T, Wells Fargo to give them a fucking hookup. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it because they would never do that. No, Tiny, but it's not cheap. That's not, I'm going to tell you what it is, Tiny. It's not them being cheap. No, that's why we're talking about it. It's not them being cheap. Y'all, come, y'all better stay with me. Do not put words in my mouth and walk it slow with me. Okay? Okay, <laughs> I ain't going to wear Okay? No, so, let me tell you what I want you to understand. This is the, it's an unspoken expectation. Okay. It's a, y'all, please feel me. God, help me. Jesus, please help me help them hear this. Otherwise, y'all going to mislabel it and you do it all wrong. It's not cheap. The logic is loyalty. They know that white people are not going to cut them slack. They know that white people are going to charge them with no compassion. Do you understand what I'm saying? They know that with a black person, even if they're not quite ready, there's still a shot that they could go ahead and try. Are you hearing me? It is not cheap. It's actually love. Sometimes people are afraid to say they don't have. And it's embarrassing to say you don't have. So you don't want to disclose that you don't, you can't afford it right now. You don't want to say that. I don't, I didn't want to fucking say it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you do, but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? And the hope is because we have some kind of similar background that you will help me. If you can remember the love, it'll give you some compassion. It's the unspoken expectation. Now I'm gonna tell you, it's, 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 it's messy as hell. I know, it's fucked off. It's why black people end up saying, I can't do this with black people. They always want to be, da, 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 da. you know what I'm saying? They say, I mean, we say, I've said it, I've shit. I got pissed off with black women for a year. Y'all pissed me off so bad. I'm like, fuck it, I ain't doing shit. I almost thought about going to market to white people. Y'all were patient with me. Y'all like, give her a minute, give her a minute. She's just mad, give her a minute. My feelings got hurt, right? And then I sorted out with me and God and now y'all good and me and God are clear. But if you don't understand that unspoken expectation, I'm not saying you got to do anything with it. You're still a business. You see what I'm saying? You are. But it's, um, I understand. I get it. And maybe because I walked it. Maybe it's because I lived it. I know that feeling of I can't do this. I need somebody to grab me some, you know, cut me some slack. Okay. Um, Keisha, people don't take it. Honey, see, y'all going to fuck with me today. I'm going to have to come for you. Keisha, no one takes advantage of you without your consent. They don't. Which is why we're talking about un unspoken expectations. If y'all hold it, this is, why I'm, this is why I'm taking the time to slow this down. If y'all hold it like cheap or take the advantage of, you don't see the love. You won't hear the cry. You won't hear the wound. You won't hear it. And if you can't hear it, you can't heal it. 
And you may just be that, he may just be the person that will heal that for that person, okay? So hear me out. Walk with me, okay? When somebody has an unspoken expectation around loyalty, okay? And you don't fulfill it, they feel betrayed. They feel betrayed. Don't you feel betrayed? Look in your own life. Don't take it as theory. Look in your own life. I don't see not one heart. Mm-hmm. Y'all say you're ready. We'll see. Y'all say you're ready. We'll see. You will see. You cannot manifest millions if you can't grant grace. If you can't see someone else's walk, if you can't hear them, then you might as well go ahead and sell a widget because my work won't work on you. Oh, now the hearts come back. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to explain to you is that when you do business with someone who's expecting loyalty in their world, you betrayed them. They have an unspoken expectation of a partner. Okay. And when you, when they feel betrayed by you, like black people felt betrayed by Kanye, okay, based on his own word, then we, we turn them into the enemy. We turn them into the enemy. I know I have. I have turned people into the enemy because I felt betrayed. But I, what, I, what I didn't deal with is that I had an unfulfilled expectation that they never signed on for. I just took it for granted that because we were rolling hard in the paint together, that we're good. But it doesn't work like that. The moment someone feels betrayed, whatever that looks like for them, they turn you into the enemy. And when they turn you into the enemy, that's, in my opinion, that's when you love them harder. But that's my opinion. But that's just how I do. My point is this. Oh, says, is there a difference between sympathy and empathy? I believe so. I think sympathy is... Um, someone look it up for me. Someone look up sympathy and empathy. But I think of empathy as literally so identifying with that other person that you're literally walking with them. I think sympathy is more of an external um, witnessing so they know that they're not alone. Okay, no, thank you, Terry. Um, now we're all learning, Terry. Thank you for being honest. I appreciate it. That's the reason why we get together on Mondays, right? Okay, so you have to look to see you, if you look in your real life, you'll see that you've done this to people. And at some point when you grow up, when you mature emotionally, okay? And it, it's, a, it's an emotional, and I do think of it as spiritual maturity. You'll start to realize, you'll look back on your life and say, well, dad, I didn't know that person's mama had just died. Or dad, I was, I didn't know that, that, they, that, I, that I, they loved me that much. That happens a lot. I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you don't know, right? And to be fair, if you don't know, you have to be tuned in enough to find out. But what I want to help you understand is this. Remember the love. I don't want anybody on the planet who has ever not had an unspoken expectation, okay? If you're going to do business the way we do business, the way we multiply money, you have to start really contending with what are the unspoken expectations that you have that undermine your money, okay? Like sometimes when people get hurt in whatever way that looks like for them, okay? Oh, oh I'm going to say this about Terry's um, statement, is that they end up killing their money by taking themselves away. It happens. I cannot tell you how many clients I've had over the last eight years who got offended or hurt or confronted with something, and it, you know, literally, my work confronts all the places where you're, where you're wounded, where you're wounded, where you're hurt, where you're broken. So it's going to come up. I know it's, it normally comes up halfway through the first fucking year. All right, and so, but it's just, and that's been my, that's been, that's been consistent for the last seven-ish years, right? And I cannot tell you how many black women have unspoken expectation about what it means to be a leader. And what it means to have a mentor. I had this one woman, brilliant, brilliant, older woman. I mean, she was everything. I mean, like, shit, I was like, I should take your class, right? And but she wanted to do the work her way. And to be fair, she was older, man. She was like, she was, she was, remember Lisa, remember that one? What was, was it, remember the one from the other country? No, it was, 
What, how old was she, 60? The older one. No, no, it was, um, I don't remember. She was older. She had to be in her 60s, right? Brilliant. Brill I mean, like, super duper brilliant, brilliant, right? But she had already come to me with a package already done. And she wanted me to make that package make money, but I could not because it was written like a doctor. You see what I'm saying? So my coach, said, Taraji said, um, Taraji said, hi, Miss Lisa. She said, hi. She's over to 17. Coffee, I think. Okay. And, but I couldn't turn it because the language was so thick. It was like reading an academic journal, right? And in her world, I, 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 I didn't feel her, I didn't fulfill her expectation. And she felt betrayed. I can see it. I understand it. And each time I said to her, this is not going to sell, what she heard was, um, it's, 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 bless her heart, that nobody would want her. And that wasn't what I was saying, but I could see how she could hear it. It makes sense. She put her whole life into this work. I'm saying it's written like an academic thing, not like marketing. People will not buy that. In her world, that feels like a rejection. So I rejected her in her world. Do you see what I'm saying? And I can see how it occurred. I can see it. I'm like, yep, yeah, I can see that. But I can't, in terms of business, I can't move that. There's nothing I can do to take academic writing and make it into marketing writing when my work is rooted in your wounds. I couldn't turn it. You see what I'm saying? And she, she never made it back. And I understand. I mean, I get it. And in terms of business, there's nothing I could do to comfort her. Do you see what I'm saying? Because it wasn't my, I, just, I, can't, I can't comfort that. It's not mine to carry. So when people turn you into the enemy, you gotta know it's not personal. Hard to remember when you're hurt. Hard to remember when they're coming at you. Hard to remember <laughs> when you've done your absolute best and they're like, well, you left me or you, you don't support me or you don't believe in me. I'm like, what the fuck have I done? Do you know what I'm saying? But it's an unfulfilled expectation rooted in their wounds. So you have to, that's why I say you have to remember to love. If you don't know that, you will take it personal and you will defend, explain, try to fix it, try to overcome it. And there's nothing you can do that's going to make that better because it's a wound that they have to heal. That wound, that wound would have got triggered with somebody anyway. Anybody that was going to let them do whatever is going to get triggered. You see what I'm saying? So you can't hold it close. You have to honor it. Does it make sense? And you have to really not take it personal. Don't get triggered by other people's triggers. Okay? Terry says, people don't understand that there's a difference. Academic, academia is different from the art, an art perspective. What you're doing is art. Well, thank you, Terry. I love that it's art. But the point of it is, the, it's, 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 um, I think that fundamentally, as human beings, we have wounds. And you don't know what they are until you start to grow. And when you start to grow, you start bumping up into what, you know, those invisible limits of what you think should or should not be. And, you, and the thing is, more often than not, the people who are going to really do the best work with you are the people who push your fucking buttons. You just have to have the wherewithal to stay the course until you can get past the upset. Gina says, getting real with myself the enemy within, unexpected. I know, girl. It's real, okay? And you can turn yourself into the enemy. I didn't do enough. I didn't try hard enough. And then you punish yourself by not, not, by, not, not, by, not, by not marketing or by not closing the sale or not by making the ask. Oh, I didn't work on it long enough. Oh, I didn't try hard enough. It's like, boo, you just turned your own self into the enemy. Ugh, you stop, okay? Does that make sense? So it, it's not one way. I just want you to get the, it's an unspoken, undeclared expectation that's in the background that you bump up against when you're on your path. You don't bump up against, when, against it when you're being safe. It only shows, it only shows up when you have when you that stay. That stay. That's because it has to, it has to, you to heal it. Okay? And when you have people in your life, whether it's your daughter, your baby, your boo, when they bump up to their unspoken unspoken expectations, you want to start with the love. I have a practice with my wife, and Lisa is everything to me. When my feelings get hurt by Lisa, I don't talk to her for at least 24 hours because I can't say it with love. Anything I say when I'm pissed is just, just not good. 
If I, and I know that about me. So I stopped talking because anything I say, I'm going to either get really, really smart and condescending, or I'm going to get really, really cutting, or I'm going to get really, really blamey, and I'm not going to hurt my wife. Now, granted, she's probably going to hurt because she feels hurt because I'm not talking, but I love her enough to protect her from my tongue. And y'all need to know that shit. If you love somebody, shut the fuck up. Don't say shit until you can say it with love. Don't do it. Don't do it. There's no, you can't, there's some shit you can't recover from. Because when you're in survival, you say shit that's past based and you can't even remember why you love. You see what I'm saying? So you can type the email, just don't send it. Don't, don't fucking send it. You can, you can type the email to a, a, a vendor, but don't send it until you can say it in love. I'm not saying I kiss somebody's ass. I'm saying you don't have to turn somebody into the enemy if you can just give yourself a minute to look for the love, give them the benefit of the doubt, have some fucking grace and mercy. God gave it to you, give it to somebody else. Jesus died for that shit. Why don't you just try it? You talk it, try it. Try it when it's hard, not when it's easy. Try it when you feel like this one. Ooh, try it then. That's when it, that's when it counts. That's when it counts. Okay, it don't count when it's easy, it counts when it's hard. That's the point. That's the whole point of getting tools and training so that when it's hard, you have a shot at keeping your relationships. This is what I want you to understand. Every person in your life is a market. They are a network. They are a champion. And you don't even know the doors you're closing because you got an attitude problem. Because they didn't do it the way you thought they should have after you let them in. Well, first and foremost, if you let them in, you want to take the case that you let them in. They didn't kick in the fucking door. That's the first thing. The second thing is nobody knows what you really need until you tell them that. So if, someone's, if you don't tell motherfuckers, then they're shooting in the dark. You know what I'm saying? And then you don't get offended because they didn't do what you thought they should do. It's an unfair fight. And the third thing is this. If someone turns you into the enemy, you have to have, it works to be emotionally and spiritually mature enough to know that they are, tr if, they have, if, they can, if they have enough language to, to articulate it, then you have to take the case, at least I do, okay? I take the case that they're growing. It takes something to speak your truth to people, especially if you, if you haven't done it before or you haven't done it a lot. And a lot of times when, when our clients come to us, people haven't been kind. So when they can say their piece, it may not be neat, okay? Hear it. Hear it. Don't defend it. Just hear it out. It's a fair call. Everyone's entitled to their experience and to their own perspective. This is what I've learned to do. My prayer, I'll stop with this. Angie says, listen, going through that now as I educate others at Starbucks initiatives, which does not minimize my support of black businesses, but it was perceived that way, point taken, far from truth and all love. I, of course, hope the love is received. We'll see. It may or may not be, Angela. Sometimes you have to walk it slow. But this is the thing. This is something I had learned a long time ago that has helped me in my business and in my life, okay? When people get triggered, one, I realize they're not responding to me. It's in one of my programs, I think it's in Street Smarts. One of them, right? So I don't, I, I get that part, all right? But this is the next part I really, really have taken on. Whatever they're going through that had them articulate their disappointment, their hurt, their shame, their resentment, their regret, whatever it is, whatever way they have to do their thing, whatever way they fight, it's all good, all right? The thing that I am looking for, and this is a, this is a pure mentor teacher moment, so all the mentor teachers know exactly what the fuck I'm about to say, okay? <laughs> it's so true. What I am looking for, when that happens, what I am looking for is a thread, and it's really like a, 
it's not even that, it's like a thread. I'm looking for the thread of personal accountability. I'm looking for one piece. There may be venom all over this motherfucker. Yes, Lord, yes, okay? But I'm looking for that one thread of them owning their power. Now, they had to turn me into the enemy to get that motherfucker, which is fair, fine, that's fine. It's called teaching. That's what we do, okay? But they wouldn't have that thread of personal autonomy and power without that breakdown. Can you hear that? I'm gonna wait on it. Maybe, I think, I mean, my, 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 my feet may be behind yours, okay? Because the last thing I have is Maisha saying, you're going dark places, woman, laugh all out. Terry says, exactly, and there's hand claps, okay? Let me see if y'all can hear that. Okay, Angela, hear it loud and clear. Okay, good. yes, ma'am. And that's the whole point. Sometimes people, yeah, some people own their own shit, but that, that comes later. There's, before someone can own their own shit, Erica, they have to speak up for what is true for them. And more often than not, if they haven't trained themselves, it's going to be messy as fuck. It's going to be blame, 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 and you, 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 and how come you didn't, da, da, da. Okay, but in there somewhere, if you're listening deeply, you're listening with love, you'll be able to hear, well, I'm going to do this, and this is what I decided to do. Good. Then your job got done. Okay? Your job got done. Because ultimately what you ought to do is actually have them if you're, if you're, if you're anything like me and blame it on the teacher on me, blame it on the teacher on me. Okay. If you're a mentor of any, any elk, you know, ilk, then your job is to have them be the author of their, of their lives, not you. So you should get okay with that. At some point, one or two or 50,000 of your clients are going to turn you into the enemy. And you should know that's not a bad thing. That's a safe thing. If they didn't seem feel safe enough with you to tell you how they feel, even if they feel like you suck, you know, you, you hate their guts, which is not the truth, but no matter how they feel, their speaking up is part of their growth. That's part of it. Them, though, know, setting boundaries, that's part of their growth. That's part of their walk. And they need a safe enough space to do that. They need to be able to turn you into the enemy, even though they think you're like, nying, 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 nying with you not punishing them, whatever that looks like, okay? Without, I mean, don't take your love away. It doesn't matter, okay? So, and that's, the, and that's how I do it. Now, I'm not saying that's the best way, but hell, it works for me, okay? Linda said, this is good content. This is awesome. Well, you're welcome, okay? No, exactly. It is part of the healing. Exactly. And once, they, once, they, once they're, you know, present again, whatever time it takes them to do that, They'll be able to look back and say, oh, I was triggered here. I was triggered there. I do this in this place. Da, 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 da. That's why it's transformational. You see what I'm saying? Angela says, yes, I was grateful for her choice to speak up, as I'm sure others thought the same thing. Just maybe they'll see my response and hear my truth. Um, Angela, we got to talk about that. It does hurt. It hurt for a moment. No, but this is good, y'all. Angela, took y'all up. Um, it says, it hurt for a moment that anyone would question my intention. I know, girl. It's fucked off, isn't it? It's like, what the hell? You, I gave my life to you. Are you fucking kidding me? All right. But it's a lesson learned, and I'm grateful for it now. Thanks for the confirmation. I welcome self-paced, self-safe, self-paced spaces for difference. It shows that it's working. Absolutely. But here's the thing. I'm going to tell y'all, your feelings are going to get fucking hurt by your clients. Get it over with. If you're invested in them and you love them in any kind of way, respect them, just know that your feelings won't get hurt. That's not a problem. That means you fucking care. Don't make it bad. That means you care. If you didn't give a fuck, you wouldn't get hurt. So don't worry about that. But you can't try to have them hear you, Angela. See, this is the thing. And I did this, which is why I can talk about it. I finally realized that when someone's hurt, they can't hear me. Why the fuck would I talk to you when you hurt? Have you ever tried to talk to a kid when they're screaming and they're hurt? They cannot hear you. So don't try to get heard when they're hurt. That's an awful way to do any relationship. Please don't do that, black women. Stop it now, okay? And I love this. I love you, I love you for it. Don't do that because they can't hear it. You can't hear shit when you hurt. Why would they be able to hear something? So don't try to get heard by the person who is wounded. Hear them. 
hear them out, okay? Get an understanding, walk in their fucking shoes. You know, let take it to your friends, take it to your mama, take it to your church to have you be heard. Talk to your peers, get you heard. That's not for them. They ain't working their shit out. You said you were a safe space. Be a fucking safe space. Even when they're being shitty. And they will be shitty. They're supposed to be. It's called human. Okay? Um, a Q says, I had to find other outlets to deal with my emotions. I think that's shit. Therapy, AA, a support group, mentorship, um, um, masterminds. Do what you got to do. I don't care. But don't, like, if I'm upset with Lisa, I'm not going to talk to Lisa about being upset with Lisa while I'm fucking upset. I'm calling my mother. I'm calling Serafina. I'm writing in my journal. I am listening to gospel music. I'm talking to the Lord. I'm not going to try to have her hear me. <laughs> she's hurt. <laughs> and until she's not hurt, she cannot hear me. And if we're both hurt at the same time, then we have to wait till we both can hear each other, right? Terry says, can you talk about intimidation? I intimidate people no matter what I do. I believe I'm good at what I do and very confident, but not arrogant. Well, Terry, here's the thing. This is great. This came up at the Miami tour stop. Another young lady said that she gets, in, that in dating, that she gets interpreted as aggressive. And when people say they're intimidated, Terry, you may want to take the case that you're speaking more than listening. So what you want to do, Terry, is real simple, boo. All you got to do is be quiet and listen and get genuinely interested in them. And when you get interested in them, you start to understand their come froms. There's a great book that I would recommend anybody read in terms of relationships, whether they're romantic or not. It's called The Five Love Languages. It's really wonderful because not everybody, not everybody communicates the same way. You know what I'm saying? So, and this is a, it's for relationships, but shit, I use everything. Shit, I use underwater basket even if I could. But you want to... Um, you want to you want to talk less and listen more, Terry, so that you can hear where people are coming from and you can match their energy. If you ever watch me, if you ever watch me um, interact with somebody live, I match their energy. I match them. I don't try to make them come to me. I go to them. Oh, Terry, I hope that helped. That's a good question. Okay. And if you do that, Terry, you won't occur as intimidating because you'll know how to pace. You'll know that not everybody needs to hear everything at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Yolanda. Okay. So let me know if that made, if that helped Terry. Okay. I'm learning this too. Talk less, listen more. No, it's a good one. If you, if you look, if y'all ever want to close sales, you're going to have to learn how to shut up. <laughs> okay. All right. I think that's it. I think I'm going to, I'm going I'm to I'm surrender the mic here. All right. So make sure you, so recap teacher moment. There are three or four different ways to turn someone into the enemy publicly which is damaging for you. Uh-oh. Does that mean, make sure you can hear me. Okay. Oh God. I hope my, if, if I end early is because I don't know what I did with Facebook. All right. Um, let me see. You can turn someone into an enemy publicly and it's damaging to you. So I would recommend you do that. You can turn yourself into the enemy, which will stop you from taking actions. I wouldn't recommend you do that. You can turn somebody you love into the enemy. And that would not work in your relationships. Or you can turn a client or a vendor into the, in, into the enemy and you'll lose money. So don't do any of those, okay? Well, I know it sounds harsh if you don't know me. So I got to remember some people just joined like five minutes ago. So I got like, oh, oops. All right. But my, so those, there's different ways to do, turn yourself into the enemy, all right, or others into the enemy. Look in your real life and where you want to start with is start with the love. Because if you are, have unspoken expectations and you feel some kind of way about it, that means you care. So start from caring and you want to respond in every situation from a place of love. You do not want to try to have them hear you. You don't want to try to defend yourself. That's only going to make it bigger. So don't do that. Okay. And what you want to really do is specifically with your clients, you want to hear them. You just want to hear them. Get up to stand it. And if you're doing sales calls, hell yeah, you just want to stop talking and listen. They, you should, they should be doing 90% of the talking. Erica says, this was so awesome. I'm glad you walk, you walk with us to the Understand Your Lesson. Thank you, Erica, for taking, staying with me. It took me a second to get it in, okay? So that's, that's my word for today, okay? If you were fair about this word, this life-altering this life altering word, this life-giving word, please pay it forward. Please share it. This one conversation could save marriages. I'm going to tell you. It's work for mine. And it also really makes you a, very, it makes you a leader with your business, not just a follower, all right? Um, no, you're welcome, Anita. You know, I appreciate you. No, it was good. Y'all did great. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thick conversation. It's not a simple one. But if you're committed to manifesting millions, you have to get to the place 
where you are not the center of attraction. You have to be more interested in people than you. And you have to have the compassion of Jesus to really let people grow and bloom in your love. Okay? And that doesn't mean you don't do good business. You do good business. Just know that they're going to get fussy sometimes and your feelings going to get hurt sometimes, but you get to love them because you said you would. Okay? So, um, respond in love. Beautiful. That's a, you know what she's, Tony, say that. Short answer, respond in love. And that you cannot, and also the book, the resource I'm thinking about right now is get the um, five love languages. It's just great. All right. So I think that's all for now. Um, I, we have three more tour stops. Come be with me, theblackwomanmillionaire.com slash tour. It is amazing. There's so much more I can do in person I can do, than I can do here. It's, I can't, it, my word is never going to explain to you the difference. You have to come up there. JJ says, not the center of attention. Just, yes, just be your brilliance with ta tactfulness. No, JJ, just love them. Just love them. Just love them. I think if you love somebody, they'll get it. If you try to explain yourself, defend, even if you try to do it with a sugar coated, I love you, but that's still defending. They can smell that. Don't do it. You can tell them if we do it to you. Stop. Go get heard by somebody who's not hurt by you and then come back. Okay. Okay, beloveds. Thank you for being my tribe. That's y'all, all my hearts left. Okay. No, I did too, Tony. I had to, everything I'm teaching, I've lived. Okay. I fucked up a lot. But know that I love you in that agape way. It is a joy to be with you. I thank God for you on so many levels. And I can't wait to be with you in LA, in New Jersey, in Austin. Those are our last three stops. Um, oh, when am I coming to Los Angeles? In a few weeks. Go to, someone type this in. Go to the Black Woman Millionaire slash tour. Okay. Look at the date. Yeah. I got tour brain. I can't remember nothing. Don't ask me to. And, um, I look forward to seeing you on tour and know that you love and remember this, you're worth so much more than you have ever been taught to believe. And if you want to make your mark, make the dip as you were uniquely crafted by life to make and manifest millions with ease and on your own terms, you have to heal your heart. I'm Dr. Venus, your Black Woman Millionaire's mentor. Goodbye for now. And please grab your seat on the tour, Black Woman Millionaire's tour. And um, share this video. Share this broadcast. It'll help somebody. Okay? Goodbye for now.